Hi everyone and thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about a concern that's been going around for the past two, three weeks in UK, in United Kingdom, about the effect of COVID-19 on key workers which are working on the front line, especially who belong to ethnic minorities, which are black and Asian minorities, which comprise about 10% of the UK population. But they seem to be having far worse symptoms of COVID-19 and very serious outcome, including uh, death as well, as compared to the local population. Recently, the Chief Medical Officer's Office has requested Public Health England to do a formal inquiry on this to see whether there's actually a reason for this or not. So I'm going to today try and come up and try and predict what the outcome of the inquiry is going to be. Probably the outcome of the inquiry won't come out for another few weeks or a few months. But today are only my predictions and why I believe uh, the difference is there between ethnic minorities as compared to local population. So these are the few outcomes that I think might be in the inquiry. Um, these are my predictions only. We are talking not about general population. Please we remember we are talking about only key workers here. That is the concern at the moment with Public Health UK. And the key workers are not just doctors and nurses, but also people working in the care homes, working in the community, looking after elderly people at their own homes, people working in the supermarkets, people working in food stalls, uh, shop, shops, etc., which are still open, uh, post offices, uh, people who are doing refuse collection, police, fire brigade, ambulance service, etc. Because these people, despite having a lockdown in the country, are still functioning as normal because without them working, the social structure of the country will collapse. So the first outcome, I think, of the inquiry would be that in a general population, not just key workers, the risk of um, black and ethnic minorities developing severe COVID-19 symptoms would be the same as that of the white population. The second outcome would be that significant number of uh, uh, black and Asian community, they are part of the key working force in the United Kingdom. So they are significant numbers of those people working in these um, frontline jobs. The third outcome will be because they are in the front line, they are more exposed to the virus because they're going out and about doing the daily job. They're more exposed to the virus. And because many of these ethnic minority people suffer, have a higher incidence and suffer from these medical conditions like high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, etc. Hence, the virus affects them far worse because of these underlying problems as compared to local white population. Now, the fourth outcome I have written of the inquiry may be that because these people are working uh, um, and belong to a low socioeconomic uh, uh, part of the society, hence they are at a higher risk of developing severe COVID-19. We know that uh, living in poverty, whether one is white, black, uh, brown, makes no difference at all. It does affect uh, the severity of the disease, not just with COVID-19, but other medical problems as well, are more common in people with social, low socioeconomic uh, background. Also, um, many of these people uh, belonging to Black and Asian minorities also have um, big family groups together, so easy transmission of virus from one person to the other. And obviously, in one household, more than one person can be not just infected but can get severe symptoms of COVID-19. I'm sure there will be more um, recommendations or outcome of the inquiry. However, despite saying all those points, I still have a big question mark in my mind that how come these people are at a high risk uh, and if they are at a high risk in key workers job in this country who are black and Asian, um, what is their risk if they were in their own country? So I'm going to take a step back and go back to their original countries where they originated from and uh, see how they would have done if they were in their native countries. So if all these ethnic minority key workers are moved back to their native countries, logically speaking, their risk should be similar 
as in UK, of getting severe COVID-19, if not worse. The reason I say that is because they will still have the same underlying medical problems like diabetes, blood pressure, heart disease, etc. They will probably still be living below the poverty line and also they will be living in larger family clusters than they live over here because the population is much bigger over there. There is more poverty, etc. So crowding is much more. Also, the medical facilities in those countries are far less advanced as they are in United Kingdom. So again, the chance of them getting severe COVID-19 should logically be higher than it is in UK. So for discussion's sake, I have chosen five countries. The reason I chose these five countries is because not all the key workers, but quite a significant number of key workers belonging to the black and Asian minorities uh, perhaps come from these five countries. If I missed out any countries and you belong to those, so my sincere apology for that. Um, I've added up all their populations and it comes to just over two billion. So a fair chunk of people which is about more than quarter of the world's population. Total world's population is over 7.8 billion at the moment. So I'm going to take these people back to this kind of the, to their native countries and say and see how they would be doing if they were living in their countries rather than United Kingdom. And these are the figures from United Kingdom. Population on the census last year was 66.65 million. Ethnic minorities, total ethnic minorities were about 12%. Now obviously they belong, these uh, uh, contain lots of different ethnic minorities. However, I think black and Asian minorities, I reduced it about down by 2% to make it about 10%. It will be about 9 or 10%, I presume. So these are the total deaths that have taken place from COVID-19 in United Kingdom. Uh, approximately 28,000 people have perished from COVID-19, sadly. Um, in the five countries put together, which I have shown earlier, Philippines, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan and Nigeria, total deaths of all those five countries reported is 2,350. So those are the current deaths. Please, I uh, give you a disclaimer now that I'm not a statistician or an epidemiologist. So the mathematics I've done is simple uh, primary school or secondary school mathematics. So if we had presumed in my previous slide that 10% of ethnic minorities in the United Kingdom um, belong to black and Asian minorities. So if you make the 10% of the total UK deaths, um, give or take a few, uh, which is comes to 2,800 people who have perished from COVID-19 in this pandemic, uh, belong, perhaps belong to the ethnic minorities, black and Asian minorities. So in this slide, I have tried uh, doing some numbers, uh, very primary school um, mathematics. So previous couple of slides ago, we changed the population of United Kingdom, which was 66.65 million, times it by 30 to make it 2 billion, which was the same population of those five countries, uh, give or take a few hundred thousand or a uh, million or two. Uh, total deaths in United Kingdom, we had presumed 10% of the 28,000 was 2,800, which belong, perhaps belong to ethnic minorities. Because I changed the population from this to 2 billion, I multiplied this by 30 as well to represent what it would have been if the population of UK was 2 billion. So the total deaths come to 84,000, which are ethnic minority deaths. Yeah. Now, of the five countries, total population we added up was just over 2 billion, same as UK I made over there. Deaths were 2,350. Now, it seemed like a very low number of deaths out of 2 billion people. So I think there are quite a few factors in that uh, their deaths might be low. However, uh, we know that uh, in those uh, countries, uh, the reporting might not be very efficient, very good. Health system is not as advanced. Also, uh, lots of rural areas where deaths are happening in people's homes. Uh, care home system does not exist in many of those countries. So getting all those get death data back into the main database, which goes to WHO, it would take quite some time. 
So to take that bias away of a very low reporting, I have also uh, timed it by 30. So uh, I have not doubled it, I have not quadrupled it, I have not done it 10 times, but just to make sure that uh, it is, uh, I put a significant number on it, so I timed it by 30. So I put the total debts to 70,500 from 3,000 or 2,350 to 70,500. So I've done it, give it a big jump. Now, again, this is only, you know, my figures. Um, please do not rely on these figures, but just to put things in perspective at the moment. On this slide, if you compare the two debts uh, of uh, black and Asian minorities happening in the United Kingdom with the same population as those five countries, is about 14,000 higher, despite giving a huge inflation of this figure, still 14,000 higher almost as compared to uh, if those people were living in those five countries. So they had a better chance of survival in their native country than they have in the United Kingdom. Now, um, so that was the big question in my mind, why is it so? So I will come up with what I believe maybe the main reason for it or one of the few reasons for it you can write in the comments below what you think might be the reason and um, i'll be very very happy to read those and will um, give me more insight into what is happening um, with covid19 around the world so i have tried comparing uh, what is happening as in this pandemic as a war now when a country goes to war with another country they take a select few, the soldiers with all the support workers go with them. The general population stays back home and the general population is usually at the lowest risk of getting hurt or uh, dying from that war. The main risk is to the people on the front line. And those people need to have the right weapons to fight the war and the right equipment to defend themselves. So they have to have the right bulletproof vests, they have to have the right armored vehicles. Giving them rubber bullets and giving them armored vehicles and bulletproof vests made out of cardboard or wood is not going to serve the purpose. If that is given, then there will be more deaths, there will be more injuries to these frontline workers. Now, as we are at war, not with a country, but with a virus, these are soldiers of the front line and all their support workers who are at the highest risk of getting hurt or dying from this horrible infection. And they need protection. And if they are not protected properly, they're not given the right weapons to fight the war, like the right ventilators, right medications, right support, enough number of ventilators, etc. They cannot fight this war properly and they have no chance of winning the war. However, giving weapons to fight the war is not enough, but need to give them protection against getting hurt as well. And these people, all these people, they did not need armored vehicles. They did not need um, bulletproof vests. All they needed was plastic aprons, gloves, caps, something to protect their eyes and masks to protect their faces. So they stay, they stay safe from this virus. In my opinion, that has not happened. And that is what that big question mark, which makes a difference of people dying more, key workers dying more in United Kingdom, then they had a chance the general population living in their own countries. Please leave your comments at the bottom of this video. I'll be very interested to know what you think about it. Um, there may be more reasons for it. However, this is, in my view, is the main reason. Um, I hope you all stay safe and I hope to see you in the very near future. And thank you for watching.